Friday floss tube. It is Friday, August 23rd, and I am recording this video up at the cottage. If you've been following along with uh, the videos that I've been putting up this week, I hope you've been enjoying them. It has been a lot of fun for me to put them together, uh, to put them up on the channel because, uh, oh, it, it's just been really fun. So hopefully you've been enjoying those. It's been nice, all the questions that I've been receiving and uh, being able to answer those. And having John on the video yesterday was was just, it, it just, I can't even describe to you. I've wanted to do that uh, sort of interview for, well, since I started these videos, I, you know, the whole reason the name of the channel is Off The Grid Needle Arts is because we love it up here so much. So being able to ask him questions and have him uh, talk to you and me introduce him to you was, was really fun. So thank you for all of your wonderful comments that you left me yesterday on that video. Uh, so today, as per all week, I'm working on my Quaker Diamonds. So in case you haven't seen it, Quaker Diamonds Rosewood Manor. And I'm concentrating today. I thought this would be a good motif to start for my Stitch With Me video because it's uh, I won't have to change threads as much. I mentioned yesterday that I've made it all the way over to the far right corner. And, oh, you can't see that, can you? Sorry. Let me see if I can move this a little bit. There. So I've made it all the way to the right corner. And obviously, I didn't measure the uh, middle of my fabric correctly. I've got probably an extra inch over on my right side than I have on my left, but that's all good. still have plenty of extra fabric for framing um, all the way around. So that's, that's good. These tiny little motifs... You know, I, I like to stitch projects where I can use up a thread and I just load the needle and I stitch until it's gone. So these kind of tiny little motifs can, can start to feel a little tedious after a while. Not that I don't love how they look because I do. Like the finished product here is, I'm absolutely in love with it. But as far as just, you know, zoning out and just enjoying the stitch, um, I, I really do like to just, you know, not have to, not have to be changing the needle a whole bunch of times. When I was working on my corners and curves, another Rosewood Manor piece, what I did was I had a whole bunch of needles loaded up with the different threads and I just kept them in the, the side of the fabric while I was stitching. And for some reason I just haven't, uh, felt like doing that with this one. Who knows? So up here we have, um... I, I stitched this tiny little, I guess I can show you my actual stitching. I stitched this little guy here so that my count would be correct to move down here for the larger motif. I am stitching this on a 28 count picture this plus in the colorway doubloon. Again, that's my best guess, but that's what this is. And I'm using a silk conversion by Vicki Clayton that was discontinued a few years back. And uh, just a little more, no, another note about those threads. First of all, I really wish that she hadn't stopped selling them because they're fabulous. But, you know, I, I've stitched with some other silk and the the quality is comparable. You know, it's Dinky Dyes is is a beautiful silk, and I love working with Dinky Dyes. I've also used um, Carrie's Creations and Silks for You. Beautiful, beautiful silks. And Vicky's um, also, you know, just gorgeous silk. But back in the day that she was selling this at my, I think my LNS was like the only place in Canada that you could buy her her floss, and it was extremely reasonable. And that for me was really the selling point, not so much, you know, the, the color variations and the quality of the silk. It really was, for me, it was about price because I could kit this up in silk for the same price that it would have costed, cost to kit it up in cottons. And in fact, this kit calls for Valdani threads which is a cotton 
And in fact, the Vicky Clayton silks at the time were less expensive than kitting it up with the Valdani's. So that is purely the only reason why I did that at the time and why I have a few other older projects that are kitted up in Vicky's threads as well. Uh, the Valdani colors for this are, you know, gorgeous. Now, I actually think that when I started stitching this, I think that there was a mistake in the conversion. And the more I stitch this, the more I think that that's probably the case. These two, the, the blue for the letters, you can see in the original pattern, the blue for the letters is much darker. And the blue that I'm using, I'm not sure you can actually see it all that well because it's more, um, more lower down where my scroll rod is on the other side. But if you can see in this E here, inside here, there's a much darker blue. I have a funny feeling that that was the blue that was meant for the letters. And this lighter variegated blue, it's very, very slightly variegated. It's, it's pretty, it's tonal. Um, I think this, I think those were switched around and I just followed what it said and I used what I what it said instead of actually really thinking carefully about it but you know what um, I actually quite like the lighter blue as the letters and I'm certainly not going to be be taking those out and changing them I'm happy with it so but I do think that was um, an original error with the conversion either that or it was user error and the conversion was correct and I just did it wrong either way it's all good so I'm working down here and the name of the, Vicki Clayton had very unusual names for her threads. So this color here was known as fish paprika. And it's this sort of lovely coral coppery color with a, with a bit of variegation in there. So that's the color I'm using to work with today with this uh, next diamond motif. <sighs> All right. So off we go, and I guess I should open up my pattern. I think I can tuck it at the bottom of my frame here and you won't, won't be in the, the screen. Okay, so I just had to grab, uh, I had written question down that I wanted to discuss today, so I just had to go and get that. Um, and before I start with that, please let me apologize, I, I, I do realize that my stitching is crooked for you. I'm very sorry that the the picture is crooked. Hopefully you are just going to be mostly watching your own stitching and not bothered by the fact that this is not straight in your view. But uh, the lighting in this room, I'm relying on my LED light and the light coming in from the window. And that combined with the fact that I have to clamp my phone camera, my, my phone, to the, the clamp, the gooseneck clamp, in order to record this. It was the best setup that I could get so that I can actually see what I'm stitching. Because if I can't see what I'm stitching, there's no point to me doing a stitch with me. I wouldn't be able to stitch. So my apologies for the crookedness, but uh, next week we should be back back on track with a, with a straight view. Hopefully, no promises. Um, okay, so Violet Stitches sent me a couple of questions uh, last few videos ago and, and we had a good, I had a great time answering those. She then sent me another question that was kind of more of a personal nature and I thought it was really the perfect thing to discuss today. And it is something that I have discussed before, probably on a stitch with me about a year ago, but it's been a while and um, you know, we're always making new friends. So I really liked her question and I thought I would share it with you and then have a little chat. So Violet Stitches asks, a question about yourself if it's not too personal. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? I ask because I had initially, I initially had you pegged as an introvert, as I am, but you have so many visitors and do so much entertaining at home and at the cabin, I've begun to wonder if perhaps you're an extrovert. If you are, if you are an introvert, how do you handle having to entertain so much in your super secluded close quarters haven? Isn't that a great question? I think so. So, yes, um, we do. We definitely do a lot of entertaining, both here 
and at home. And I do consider myself an introvert, but more of an extroverted introvert, if that makes sense. Um, being in that, if I, I need, I require time by myself to sort of, you know, recharge and I think we all do to some extent, but, but some people more than others. My preferred state of being is, is to be quiet. So to just have either myself or one or two other people. Now I am in a family of four, so let me bump that number up to, you know, three other people other than myself. And then, but because I think it's fairly clear by now that I love to talk. You know, that's one of the reasons why Floss Tube has been just so incredible for me. Because I get to talk as much as I want, but I feel like it's a chat one-on-one. -on -one. I feel like it's a one-on-one -on -one chat, even though I'm meeting, you know, so many new people. It's, it's, been, it's been truly amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I love to talk and I, I do go on, but yes, we have a lot of visitors, but one thing that I need to keep in consideration is the fact that my husband and my children are not introverts and they, I have to word this. It's, sometimes I have difficulty wording things the way that I mean them so that it's not, I, uh, this is, see, I'm struggling here. I love it when people come to stay for short periods of time. And then after a few days, I start to feel that I need my space back, which is a feeling that I'm never really happy with about myself because the, the people who are, have come to visit us are people that I love, are people, you know, my friends and my family and, and people who love me. And it's, it's a quality about myself that I, I don't always love because of the way that it starts to make me feel. And so, but I also recognize that my husband, you know, the, the people who just came to, to stay with us, they're from Hong Kong, you know, they don't live in Canada. So in order for us to spend time with them, they come here and, you know, we only see them once a year. And the, the husband is my husband's best friend. And I really, really like his wife and they have three kids and Nicholas adores their children and they have such a great time. So, you know, we have a really great visit, but my husband knows, he knows me well and he, he he's amazing. He will take everybody for a boat ride. You know, he will take everybody for a picnic. He'll take the kids for ice cream. He'll take everybody, you know, out for a couple of hours. And he, there's no expectation that I must also go and entertain. Which, you know, some people might find a little strange or a little rude, but everybody knows that I don't love boats. I don't like boat rides. I'm not up here to go boating or, you know, windsurfing or that kind of thing. My friends know that I'm a crafter and that when I'm here, I also do some work and that I don't love boats, but they do. And so John, they go out and they have a fantastic time. And I have a few hours to be quiet. I just have some time to reset and be quiet and be by myself. And then by the time everybody comes back, I feel better. So it works quite well. And when you, when you live in a place where 
it, it, it is remote, uh, either people come to you or you don't see anyone. So um, John's relatives are mostly from overseas. And so when they come in the summer, they, they come for a while. So the expectation is that we will generally have company here much of the summer on and off. But on a regular summer, I will have pockets of time during the summer where we don't have people here during the week. And John goes back to work and the cottage is quiet. And I get to, you know, recharge my batteries and gear up for the next round of visitors. And I'm not going to lie, we have a great time. We do. We have a really great time. And we're so fortunate in our friends and family that uh, who, who love to come here and so it's it's pretty great but yeah it's one of those things about myself that I do wish you know I wasn't quite like that but that's how I am and fortunately for me John's pretty understanding and he knows he knows how to how to uh, sweeten me up and keep keep my mood, um, keep my mood, what's the word, you know, keep me happy. So that's pretty nice. At the moment, he has taken Nicholas over to, he's taken the snorkeling equipment over to the other island to, believe it or not, hunt for his sunglasses. Because he went out in the kayak the other day and he dropped his sunglasses and he knows approximately where he dropped them. But he didn't have the snorkel gear with him at the time. So that was yesterday. So he's gone back over there to uh, snorkel down and see if he can find his sunglasses. So he and Nicholas have gone for a few hours because after they, if they find the sunglasses, he's also um, going to then take him over to the marina for ice cream. So the cabin is quiet at the moment. It's just me in here all by myself. And I thought, now is finally my chance to sit down and put a few stitches in, which has been rather nice. Okay, so where I am here, I'm, I ended at the top of this motif and I'm going to be coming down here. And it's only four stitches, but I don't like to have that loose thread in the back. So I'm using a K's Creation lap frame here for those who are wondering and I've got um, you can't see them but I'm using some actually you can see it up here I'm using some handy clamps I like to use these up at the cottage with my larger projects because then I can take the linen back and forth to home and just clamp the project onto the scroll rods instead of having to sew it directly to the rods it allows me to change my projects a little bit more frequently uh, so I'm going to flip this over and as you can see I've got my frame detached on the one side to make it a little easier for this video just because um, just how I had to angle the thing. I know it doesn't make much sense. It makes sense to me because I had to do it but anyways it's neither here nor there. I don't like to have a whole bunch of loose uh, length of thread in the back more potential for knots. So even though it's just coming, it's like three or four stitches, I'm still going to sew my end through to where I'm gonna be putting my next stitches in. There we go. All right, back in business. So now we'll head over to this side here. So well, I, I hope that answered your question. Extroverted introvert. Love to talk. I love people. But sometimes I just need... I just need some quiet time. And then I'm usually pretty happy. So we're only here for a couple more days and then be heading home 
heading home uh, first thing Sunday morning. Sunday is the last Sunday of the month. And you know what that means. It's going to be time for Sunday high tea where we celebrate something from our stash, whether it's a new start or pulling out an old project that you haven't seen in a while. Whoops. Just about lost my needle there. Pulled that hole open a little too much. I'm going to just fiddle that a bit. There we go. It's better. And then we have some plans, uh, family plans next week. So there won't be a Monday floss tube video, but I will be doing one more cottage diary tomorrow and then a Sunday high tea video on Sunday. But that video I'm probably going to record back at home in London on Sunday. So that one might be up a little bit late on Sunday. We'll have to see. It's got a long drive and all that good stuff. Um, Monday I need to spend packing up um, Evertote orders to get those out in the post so I won't have time to record a Monday video and I'm sorry about that. I always miss them when I don't do them but um, I need to get those orders out in good time and so there you have it. The weekend after that thread isn't lying very nicely here and I'd like that to there I know fussy right fussy the weekend after that so Labor Day weekend we are moving Sarah into her residence room which is shocking shocking that we're at that stage so Time for university. Just in love with this pattern. I really am so enjoying working on this. Doesn't matter how long ago I started it. Doesn't matter that it's not finished. This is one of the reasons why I, I so enjoy having, you know, multiple projects on the go doesn't matter when I finish it doesn't matter how long it takes I'm I am such a process stitcher that enjoying the different threads the different colors the different motifs just watching it come to life and knowing eventually one day it'll be finished and on my wall I just don't care how long it takes and I'm but at the moment this is really floating my boat, I have to say. Love it. Love it. Okay, so I think I'm just going to finish this thread and then I'm going to have to call it a day for my stitching. I have a little bit more, well, I have a fair bit more sewing to do today. Um, but before I get to sewing, I have ironing to do. Uh, we'll, I've got all of my stuff batched and ready to go so that I can run the generator for the iron all at once, get that ironing done, and then get back to the sewing machine. I have been watching, oh, I love this so much, uh, Dar's, Pride and Prejudice, the BBC version. The, and it's like, you know, over 20 years old now, that, that series, and it just, it'll never age. You know, make that music. You know the intro music of that that series? It's the one with Colin Firth, the BBC version. That intro music just makes you smile. They just picked the most perfect music for that mini-series. And the actors, all of the actors are so well cast. It's, uh, it's just such an excellent production. And... I try not to overwatch it. I probably haven't watched it in about, I'm going to say eight years. 
and so I decided to download it onto my iPad before we left for the cottage last week and so that I could watch it while I was sewing this week. I wear headphones while I'm sewing, otherwise I wouldn't be able to hear much. And it is, it's been so enjoyable. And I have, I think I've got one and a half episodes left. So I'm gonna finish those this afternoon with my sewing. And then tomorrow I'll get back to my audiobook, which I haven't really been, haven't really been listening to. But uh, totally behind on Floss Tube. So I'm really looking forward to catching up with Floss Tube when I get home. Because I miss I miss everybody's videos. Having them sort of queued up on YouTube ready to, to play through is is so fun. So that's a small downside to being up here. No floss tube. And I know I could download it somehow, but it does give me a chance to catch up on a few other podcasts and stuff that I've got downloaded on my phone. There's there's just too much good stuff to listen to. Too many good podcasts and audiobooks and shows and all that kind of stuff. There's just too much. We are spoiled for choice. One more. Here we go. Last one. And done. Look at that. This one I started. So I've got my next motif, my next corner ready to go down there. Let's sew in that end. Whoops. I'm not showing off this lap frame to its best advantage because I've got it taken apart. It's not really working properly, but for the purposes of this video, it's done quite nicely. And I'll put it back together again as soon as I've pushed the button to say goodbye. There we go. Done. And I am, look at this. I'm going to shamelessly self promote my uh, summer kit. I'm using. Carrie's um, scissor fob. It is the she's the she's um, creative curator on Instagram, and her scissor fob is part of the summer kit that I've just put out on Evertote. And the beads in this they look like honey. They look like honey. Can you? I hope you can see them. I'm going to assume you can see them because I'm staring at them, and usually you can see what I see most of the time. Unless it's out of the focus, out of focus on my other camera, but I'm using my phone today. Uh, oh yeah, it's so pretty. Love it. I love how scissor fobs fit in your hand. Do you know what I mean? You know that feeling when you when you can hold on to it like that? It's a good feeling. So is that a finished thread. All right, let me spin it around so you can have one more peek. And I hope that you managed to put a few stitches into your project as well. Look at that. It's so pretty. Oh, I love it. Okay, so I'm off to do a bit more sewing. And then tonight, I'm hoping to do a little bit more work on here. But then I'm going to start to work on my fill-in in here. And I've got the letter Q to put in over here. So might, I might, might get to that Q next. We'll see. So I can fill in this this area here but I'm just loving it it's beautiful all right that's it for me today I will see you tomorrow with my very last cottage diary and I will have uh, hopefully some more footage of anything that I see outside if any if not a lot can happen every day so it might just be some more scenery if you'd enjoy to see that and uh We'll just, I'll show you my crafty things that I've gotten up to tonight. So, happy stitching. I'll see you on the Facebook group, Friday Off The Grid, tonight. And, uh, there you go. Happy stitching. Mm -hmm.